Hello everyone, welcome to my week three teaching memo. Uh, winter hit us hard here in Poughkeepsie the last few days. Dr. Laura had two snow days on Thursday and Friday. Friday was kind of a surprise, but uh, uh, the Kingston School City School District decided to have a, had, they first had a delay and then decided to close. Uh, she also had a delay this morning. Uh, we had a, uh, about four or five inches of snow yesterday. Actually, it snowed pretty much most of the day. Um, even though Turo was closed Thursday, Dr. Tom was working. A little post-Super Bowl news. Someone stole Tom Brady's jersey right out of his gym bag. Wow. Uh, housekeeping. Um, I, I initially had a problem opening those of you that recorded your videos with Kaltura. For some reason, uh, I can't even use Kaltura um, uh, with any of the browsers I have. I've tried with like three different ones. Uh, but I was able to watch your Kaltura videos uh, with Mozilla Foxfire. So uh, it depends on the browser, I guess, as to um, whether you can watch it or not. Um, uh, many of you uh, recorded your videos with either a video camera or a um, iPhone or phone and, and tried to show your computer screen with that phone. Uh, you should really experiment with Kaltura because it's built right into Blackboard. I use Camtasia Studio, which um, I had to uh, pay for, um, but I like it and I'm used to it. Uh, and I just can't seem to figure out how to get Kaltura to work on my computer. Um, but uh, several of you did it. You had your, your, we could see your face, we could see the screen. Uh, and that's really what um, makes for a good presentation, especially when you're presenting information that you want to show on your computer. Uh, there was a lot of glare when you tried to, sh uh, some of you tried to show us your, your phone and it was very difficult to see, it was too small. Uh, so those are all ways that you can make your video production a better because uh, Turo has paid for Kaltura to be uh, inserted into Blackboard. So uh, that's some advice from Dr. Tom. Um, I've graded all your double entry journals. Uh, for many of you, that's the first time you've ever done anything like that. Uh, I was pretty impressed with most of you. Um, some of you get caught up in a note-taking style. Um, this is what the author said. This is what I think the author said. And that's really not what I'm looking for. Um, I know what the author said, especially the article that, that I co-authored with Dr. Laura. Um, I'm more interested in your reaction to what I wrote or reaction to what the authors wrote. And in, in that first double entry journal, how you connected to the first days of school because that was really the theme of that whole session. Personal relationship building in the first day of school. Some of you didn't mention the first day of school at all. Uh, and so that really uh, affected the, uh, your, the quantity of your, uh, that quantity portion of your rubric, of the rubric. So um, you're going to have one more double entry journal uh, coming up and uh, so use the feedback that I gave you to improve on that double entry journal. Um, as far as we have a, uh, a, the second discussion board this week on culturally relevant math, make sure you look at the feedback I gave you for your first discussion board. Here are some things that many of you uh, struggled with. Making your initial post late. If you, you met several of you or many of you went on the last day or the last weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you got your three days in, but really people, many people got their posts done in the first week of the discussion board, never went back. I wouldn't recommend that either. Um, I know a lot of you like to get it done, get it over with, but it is a discussion and there are some interesting comments that come in that second week. So, um, so making your initial post early, uh, if you make it within the first week, that's, that's a grade of an A, that's a uh, distinguished rating. If you want an advanced rating and A+, plus, you got to make your initial post within the first three days of the session. So that, that would be by Wednesday uh, if we start on Monday. Um, uh, not citing the text in four of your posts. The discussion boards are not for you to say, hey, I liked what you wrote, that's kind of neat, what grade do you teach, things like that. You can do that, 
but do that after you've done your minimum number of postings <laughs> because those, I won't count those or they won't count as having citing the text. So if you're only going to do six posts and many of you are just doing the minimum and that's fine, um, that means one initial post, five response posts. In four of those responses, you have to cite the readings, which I have in course materials, my presentation, which is in the presentation folder, or other relevant, and I say relevant, quote unquote, because some of you are sharing websites that have nothing to do with the topic. So this topic is going to be on culturally relevant, relevant math, and I'm going to be asking you to go out and find uh, culturally relevant math activities so I can add them to course materials in that folder. And I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, many of you posted less than six times or fewer, or fewer than on three days. Um, the rationale here is to get you to post and then return to see how we react to your comments. Posting late on the last day, starting to post at 8 o'clock on Sunday night and making six posts uh, doesn't really help ex expand or extend the discussion. Uh, and typically not many people are, are going to read those, only the people that uh, are, are signing on late with you. <laughs> Especially me, I mean, I usually I'll work, I usually do a little work on Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings. But typically on the weekends at night, I do not go on. So I won't see and be able to react to what you wrote if you're posting late Sunday in the afternoon or in, in the evening. So, um, so uh, remember that the discussion boards increase in weight. I'm not sure. I think there's three. We have three discussion boards. So the third one is going to be weighted the most. The first one is weighted the least. So. If you got a low mark on your first one, do not despair uh, because it won't affect your grade as dramatically as the last one will. Okay, session three. Um, this was the technology portion of the course. Um, most of you have already taken a technology course, so when we talk about math, science, and technology or STEM, science, technology, education, um, they, that what I'm looking for was to get you to share different applications that you can use in your classroom. Um, and some of you shared items that your district bought, like your district bought a, a, a whiteboard and you talked about how you can use a whiteboard. Um, that's really not what I'm looking for because if most districts that have whiteboards have tr give you training on that, give you training on whiteboards. Um, most districts that have, say, an IEP uh, software program give you training on that IEP program. And unless you're on a committee to choose software, you're not going to be ever be involved in that. So um, I'm going to have to make that much clearer. So I want to thank those people that did that because I didn't make that clear, and that's my fault. So you certainly didn't get downgraded for that. But what I'm looking for is applications and websites like say abcyad.com where um, we all can use it some many of them them are, were free uh, I know that I I, per, I have a subscription to reading eggs which uh, I, I did for my uh, grand granddaughter and that's a yearly subscription not too prohibitive like a hundred bucks a year or something like that but um, it's it's great for early readers and elementary school readers but so um, th those are some of the concerns I had. The, the major concern surfaced on the last day, and I didn't find it out to today, naturally, because I didn't see those posts until this morning, um, is that two people use students' names in their videos, which is a violation of FERPA regulations. We are not allowed to divulge any information about a student without parental consent. In one case, I deleted the video because it revealed names of special ed students and in another, I advise the video be made private because even unlisted videos can be shared. Um, I didn't take any points away. I, I, I'm going to give you full credit for those, but um, that really is um, prohibited by FERPA laws, and, and you could get in trouble uh, for doing that. So um, keep that in mind as we move forward. 
Um, this session will be moving into ma the mathematics portion of the course with a unit on culturally relevant math. This topic is not a common one, uh, but I feel it's important to investigate um, as um, to investigate as many of us. I feel it is important to investigate as many of us who will be teaching or uh, students from a plethora of cultures. I have created a presentation and shared several sources and course materials to which you should connect and respond in this week's discussion board. I will also be looking to add content for this unit with information and sources that you find. Um, I will add those into um, the I have a folder under course materials for multicultural math activities. Now you can see that I have a this is just I've only taught this course once before and this is what I've accumulated from students who have shared these. So um, make sure you go in here and look at these because you, you might be able to uh, use these in your own course in your own curriculum. And so um, something to look at and something to go out and find uh, and talk about on the discussion board. Um, I've also created the first of several quizzes. Uh, my advice, and based on past experience, many of you will not take this advice. Um, my advice is to go into uh, course materials and uh, and I'm going to go in that course, yeah, course materials. I'm, and you'll see right at the top is the hard copy of the culturally relevant math quiz. So I would download that and um, you can see it here there are fill in the blanks uh, multiple choice and mul multiple choice there are 10 questions all together take it and then go into the quiz discussion board and um, where is the quiz discussion board you might ask well um, it is in all discussions and you see it right there um, so I would take it the hard copy first, go in and talk about ones you have difficulty with, then go online, take the quiz, and you do that by um, going into the assignment folder for session four. And, and you can take it online and keep track of um, keep track of the ones you get wrong and then go in and talk about those. Now you can't talk about, you can't give answers. Oh, the answer to number five is uh, su such and such. And uh, the thing is, uh, if I see that, I will delete it and then I will chastise you or slap you on the wrist. Um, so don't do that. That's cheating. That's not why this, uh, the discussion board I, is created. It's created to make these uh, selected response quizzes formative. Uh, so I'm using them in a formative way so you can discuss the ones you got wrong. So um, that's your, that'll be your first quiz. Um, take it online. You have two chances to take it. Many of you will just take it again right after you take it the first time. And again, that's your prerogative. But uh, I would recommend going into the quiz discussion board, talking about the ones you got wrong. Everyone should get 100 on the quizzes. And unfortunately, it doesn't happen, and it, ju it just boggles my mind um, that people uh, don't want to get 100, I guess. <laughs> um, so that's my advice for taking quizzes. Um, you're also going to begin planning your math lesson plan this week. This is your major project-based assignment. You will begin by selecting a, gra a grade level and subject area. So. If you go in to um, additional resources, and it's right here, additional resources, right at the top, you'll see lesson plan resources. And you can, that first, I would download this official template. This is the only template I will accept the lesson plan on, so please do it on this template. It's the one Turo is using. Uh, whether you have to take the EdPA, EdTPA or not, 
I want you to do your lesson plan on this template. And again, you can see it's, if you click on the link, you'll see it, and you can go over here to the arrow and download it. Um, so everybody does the same one. Um, there, uh, this is the rubric, but the, this is the official Turo rubric. Everybody, every Turo instructor is using this rubric. You can see it's pretty uh, complicated. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen uh, different items of quality. So use that to guide your creation of your lesson plan. Lesson planned IDs in this folder, um, you'll see uh, NCTM Illuminations, Adapted My, My Math Lesson Plans, Math Teacher Resources, Lesson Plan Games and more, Teacher Vision, Teachers.net, uh, and there's also Engage New York, which will give you ideas. Now, please don't copy these because you're going to have to upload your lesson plan and it's going to be checked by SafeAssign. So if you've copied uh, one of these plans, um, it'll show. Um, there's exemplar EdTPA lesson plans here. Um, these aren't done on the Turo um, lesson plan, but they have been done. Uh, allegedly, they are received scores of five. So I, I would definitely look at those. Uh, there, one's a kindergarten one, one's a grade four uh, math lesson plan. Uh, and there are other resources here. There are teaching videos, uh, and, uh, video on engaging English la language learners, helping struggling students build a growth mindset. So all good stuff uh, for creating your lesson plan. So the first thing that I would recommend is picking a topic and then you need to go into course material I believe it's course materials no it's a it's in assignments if you go into the assignment folder you'll see uh, a this is a chapter on how to create learning targets one of the hardest things I find for my students to do is to create targets that are specific and measurable um, and you will, as we go along, you'll see in the next session, I'll give you verbs, um, action verbs to use, and I think I'll point those out to you right now. In session five, there should be action verbs and course materials. Um, mm, 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 mm. Verbs for writing behavioral objectives. Notice what I say here. Avoid using the following behavioral verbs when writing learning objectives because they are vague and difficult to measure. Appreciate, cover, realize, be aware of, familiarize, study, become acquainted with, gain knowledge of, understand. Many of you will write targets that say students will be able to understand, ba ba ba. That is not specific and it's not really measurable. So um, avoid those verbs. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So that you'll start on that. Um, make sure that you uh, choose appropriate Common Core State standards. Um, create learning targets that are specific and measurable. Um, and um, that's it. So. Um, we have a week off, so you have plenty of time to complete your assignments uh, and for those who need to, to catch up. So uh, happy Valentine's Day, and I will be talking to you in two weeks.